had like a really pressing, urgent question which cannot wait. Uh, raise your hand, I'll try to answer it like as best as I can. So let's begin. First of all, as I mentioned, uh, we have really a range of people right here. We have some seniors and we have some juniors. By the, by the way, do you know what these guys are? Can I get uh, can I get somebody who knows both of them? Really what? don't them. Really? Come, come on. You can raise your hand. Tell me. One is Elliot. Are both guys on screen? Sorry? Are both these guys? Uh, yeah, do you know who they are? Oh, I know their names, like. Yeah, okay, so do you, can you like, introduce them? Really quick. Well, that one is Derek Elliot. Yeah, that's right. And the right one is Dan Devereaux. Exactly. So uh, why are they famous? At least one of them is like really famous. That I wrote three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I really, really, really encourage you to read everything that this guy writes. I uh, really admire this. Uh, at least you know, like it's 2017. It's like functional programming all of a sudden. So he really, uh, he really has a good, uh, in my opinion, good introduction. Uh, blog, like articles about uh, functional JavaScript, how to start with it, and uh, so on. And Dan Abramov, it's uh, it said I, I'm saying right here, but he's a junior. Uh, he's of course not a junior. He's uh, the author, like co-author of Redux, uh, Facebook employee, and uh, like almost you can say that he's like semi semi official Facebook PR guy. Like he has so many responses in like uh, Facebook, sorry, Facebook uh, React uh, GitHub, and uh, he like answers lots of um, like issues and so on. Uh, but once once uh, he said uh, in his tweet that he considers himself to be a junior, so that's why he's here. Uh, what I wanted to say is uh, for the juniors right here, uh, this is for you. Like this presentation is for juniors. For seniors, think about how would you go about mentoring a junior developer, okay? Try to get that from this presentation. It might not be like, uh, you might know like 90% of the things I'm like presented right here, but they might help you in teaching your colleagues who have never used React. So, first of all, you cannot really learn React until you know why you want to learn React. And remember group number one, we haven't, haven't used React, but uh, you are here, so I assume that you want to learn React. Can you tell me why do you want to learn React? Can you share like it's popular? <laughs> because it's just 2017. Yeah, <laughs> the best, best year so far. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so we can uh, save that. We can start shouting. Okay. <coughs> can you hear me right now? Okay, excellent. So, uh, can I get? Uh, can you please continue? I believe we are interrupted. So it's 2017. So what? It's the only reason? No, it's not. Um, because uh, most of the big corporations are using it, and we can, if we want to be a part of that, maybe we should learn it. Okay, yeah, that's a fair point, guys. That's a fair point. Uh, can I get <laughs> your opinion? Because of React Native platform. Of course, React Native. And what's so cool about React Native? Because it's native. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you mean like native, native, like native Indians, <laughs> Native Americans? I'm sorry. Uh, okay, that's a fair point too. Actually, uh, very good point. I have it. So, thanks for screwing up my next slide. <laughs> Can I get some other? Uh, yeah. It saves your time and nerves while developing. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And can. You're all like from group number one, right? Beginners, you haven't used it, or you are like, you know, using it every day. Uh, so, I'm just going to share a little bit about uh, me and uh, my team. 
how we learned about it. And, oh, before that, uh, we kind of had a question. So, do we really need a new library? What's wrong with just jQuery? And, uh, yeah, again, can I get your answers? What's wrong with jQuery? Everything. It's perfect. <laughs> it's already perfect. You don't need to extend it. <laughs> Okay, that's I, I sense a man who had gone through a lot. <laughs> that was, you know, pain, pain, really painful answer from the heart. So yeah, luckily I, I kind of haven't haven't got into that uh, really bad jQuery stuff. But I, I can guess that this answer was because you were trying to do something like a single page application with a jQuery, right? Am I right? Yes. Okay, yeah. So that's that's probably the number one reason why people need React. They want to build single page applications. Uh, why do we build single page applications? So we we are server rendering using like Ruby on Rails and all that all lots of PHP stuff. Uh, so it was all good and nice. What's all? What's that single page application all about? So why, why do we need that? <laughs> Sorry, I. Two thousand seventeen. Yeah, that's the that's the topic really of today's. No, not React. Two thousand seventeen. Uh, yeah. So as a user, not as a developer, as a user, I strongly feel that you should not wait two seconds after every click on a bleeping link. So, uh, really, really imagine, uh, s sometimes, you know, when you use it, when you go to a website uh, and it's not a single page application, you, you think it's not that bad, you're used to it, but I sometimes imagine what would happen if that would be not a website, but an app, like a mobile native app, okay? How would you feel then? You probably would throw your phone so hard it would just like go through a wall. Uh, I mean, it's it's like absurd. It's uh, unthinkable that you would have to wait for the server to send a new view for your app every single time you click on something. And uh, I really feel that that should be the case with websites. And uh, every time you click on something, it should react. It should not wait for the server to handle it like uh, SM mommy for you. The second thing why I personally wanted to learn React is because React Native. And yeah, you mentioned that uh, you got like beer from this, like as <laughs> premium beer. So come after the presentation, I'll give you like one premium beer. Yeah, that's a deal. Uh, yeah so React Native, uh, again, Thought it's like an excellent project, uh, really wanted to learn it. Uh, to be honest, right now, I'm not so excited about it. Uh, I kind of bounce back to web. But still, I think that uh, if you have to have an app, that's probably the best way right now to have it, to, to do it. Uh, my personal opinion, it's not shared with my company <laughs> currently. <laughs> But uh, still, uh, Facebook is using it, uh, Instagram is using it. Uh, I think like lots of other mobile apps are using it. And those are mainly the two reasons why you should use React. If you're not developing single page application or you're not using, uh, you don't want to like start with React Native, uh, you should really think hard if you really need React. There are lots of other cases, but uh, those two, in my in my mind, is the most important ones. So, what makes React so special? Uh, we had we had front end frameworks before, right? We had can I'm going to see what I remember. We had like Knockout, Backbone, Angular, uh, Ember. Uh, what? I think it it was newer, or at least newer than React. Uh, I mean, j just older, older stuff before React. 
Can you name something else? I think polymer. Polymer, right? Yeah. Batman. <laughs> oh, sorry? Don't you do Batman? Batman? Bat this Batman GS, Google it. <laughs> okay, no, I'm going to do that right after the presentation. <laughs> really? Seriously, there is a Batman JS? Yeah. Come on, guys, you should be using that. JQuery. JQuery, yeah, that's, that's not <laughs> really, uh, like, not fully a framework, more like a helper library. What if you have the UI library? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. That's, that's a valid point. You get, like, half of the RL during the first half of the episode. Okay, JQuery, that, that's a fair point. Uh, so what makes React so special? First of all, again, my personal opinion is because of components. What's so good about components? Can you explain to the juniors right here what's so good about components? No separation of concerns. Um, <laughs> <not> really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's a bit of cynical. You write all your inline, all the CSS, yeah. and mix yes, HTML with right. JavaScript. HTML. Yeah, that's, that's the best practice. <laughs> uh, now, seriously, what's so great about components? Can you, can you like, at least think about it? Uh, we actually thought about it a lot. <laughs> and uh, we decided that components really let you have scalable apps. You can reuse them, uh, especially if, if you're working like on a single, like, project who the, like the deadline is in two weeks maybe it's not that uh, essential but if you have to maintain a project for a really long time if you have to reuse the same components all over your uh, single page application or web apps as we are called also uh, so this this component componentization it becomes like really important uh, also for maintenance, you can like really have everything in one place updated in like single uh, like directory or stuff like that. Uh, it's hard to tell if React was the first one to introduce components, but uh, I think it, it's safe to say that it was the first one who really made them like really popular. Okay. Uh, Second thing, which I personally really like, is modular ecosystem. And this is the difference between like lots of other front-end frameworks, and React, by the way, is not a framework. It's, they, they say it's just a library. And this is the point about it. Uh, other uh, frameworks, they have a lot of things going on inside them, right? They have routers. They have uh, like lots of helper libraries, basically. React has everything separate, right? You, Redux is not included in React. React Router, not included in React. Even React DOM right now is a separate project. React is not the same as React DOM. You can, you can have like, uh, I'm not, not like super sure about this one, but uh, server-side rendering, don't, uh, oh no, you're using that. Uh, still, they are using, uh, they are using, they are starting to experiment with React, with uh, Oculus Rift, and these like new technologies uh, are not going. You are not getting the bloat, I mean, and that's that's why I really like about it. It's everything is components. If some component kind of becomes uh, outdated or not, not that hot at the moment, so you just replace it with a newer one, a better one. Then, as you said, it's popularity. Lots of companies are actually using that. And I was really surprised by how many companies are using React in their production apps. Uh, there's even a, a website, I think it was, it's maintained by React, by the way, and we list all the websites, all the companies who are using uh, React in production. Uh, it's not, I, it, my point is not that a lot of companies are using it. My, my point is that the Facebook itself are using React on Facebook. And uh, this kind of proves several points. First of all, uh, it can handle like the biggest website in the world, right? The most, probably most complex and most traffic uh, 
getting a lot, lot of traffic, okay? Uh, maybe Google's like getting more traffic, but still Google's like just one input box, that, uh, like a button, and Facebook has so many things going on and they're using React. Uh, try to find how many projects are using like uh, other com competing front-end frameworks, you'll see that React is hands down, like mostly supported by its parent uh, company. By the way, same goes with React Native. Uh, React Native is actually like Facebook apps and uh, mobile apps and Instagram mobile apps are actually using React Native. Then it's the future. And I'm not saying that React is the future. I'm saying that React will inspire the future. The same way as, you know, like uh, Unix like or C language inspired like many, many, many programming languages. I think that in the same vein, uh, React will inspire a lot of next generation front-end libraries or even, you know, programming languages uh, which like compile to JavaScript or stuff like that. So if you learn these React patterns, you'll find the next hot thing is easier to learn for you. Finally, uh, it has over 9,000 GitHub stars. Actually, it's not 9,000, it's over 60,000 seeds. <laughs> many, many more. And as we all know, GitHub stars equals quality. Like just one like correlation, perfect, perfect causality. Okay. Okay, oh, so I'm done with my first part. Great. The second part, the more important one, uh, how do we learn React, right? Uh, I really hope that I convinced you that you should learn it. Now let's talk about how do you go about it. Uh, first of all, that may come as a surprise to you, but you have to know the basics. Uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, no question about it, whatever, at, whatever people tell you, uh, you don't need them anymore. You actually need them, you actually need to understand them and then use something else, okay? What's the best way to learn it? Uh, my opinion are these three resources. I have no idea why the font is so small. Let's make it bigger. Uh, free code camp. Who has ever used free code camp? Great. Uh, code Academy. Code Academy, sorry. Great. W free schools. And before you're throwing <laughs> rotten tomatoes at me, uh, let me explain. <laughs> uh, for beginners, just uh, trial and error, I was uh, actually had opportunity to teach people uh, those basics. And then you're just, just starting out. Uh, w free schools really is really approachable. Okay? It's not scalable as I mean, uh, when you are becoming a better developer, you see the flaw, you're starting to see the flaws in this website, but when you're just starting out, it's like really, really accessible. So still not great, but good resource when you're just starting out. Then we have this guy, the evil ES6. Uh, I had some mixed opinions actually about ES6. I personally love it. But I know some people who say that it's uh, ES5 was excellent. ES3 was the best, actually. <laughs> ES5 was, oh, okay, so we can live with that, but uh, classes in JavaScript? What's, what's that all about? Uh, so can I get, again, a raise of hands who love ES6 and it's new friends? Can I get a raise of hands who hate it? Okay. Nobody, really? Nobody hates ES6? Okay, so I, I had probably this one like really strange case, okay? Uh, actually, it's ES6 Plus since it's called ES2015, to the ES2016, ES2017, ES7, and ES8. All of these things are under this uh, ES6 Plus brand, I, I, I at least group them like that, and what that means is current React documentation, the new tutorials I use in ES6, 
it's really hard to understand if you if you are used if you done front-end development for the last like couple of years but you haven't picked up the CS6 syntax you kind of must have must do it before you really continue on okay that's just all there is about it uh, this is my personal favorite website uh, Code Wars and I use it uh, can I get who, who is using that I used to use it ago. really why did you stop <laughs> okay, that's, that's the best reason of all. Uh, personally, I really recommend you using Code Wars, how I use it, every single day that I get to my desk, then I open my laptop, I feel like at 10% energy level, you know, like, I, I couldn't, you should not let me to code, like, real life, like, production applications with this shit going on in my head. So I go to Code Wars, I solve some simple exercises, I get up to speed, then I can get to work, okay? So next to your morning coffee, do at least one like Code Wars Kata, and you'll see that in like six months, you'll be a better developer. I've been at it like uh, probably for six months right now, every single day I'm doing a Code Wars Kata. And honestly, uh, 700 something. I, I don't overdo it, uh, I just do one per day. But uh, I have like 2,000 something points. So if, if you are above me, so don't tell anybody, but if you're below me, say it's awesome. <laughs> so Code Wars makes you a better developer. Doesn't matter if you're a junior or if you're a senior, they have katas for everybody. I dare you if, you, if you consider yourself to be like a super senior developer, I'll find you a level like free Q kata, which you will not solve like in an hour, okay? So uh, come to me if you don't believe me, like after this presentation. Actually learning React right now, right? Uh, official tutorial, uh, they updated it at some point and now it's... Uh, tic-tac-toe game uh, if I remember correctly it was a uh, to-do app in my days but now it's a tic-tac-toe game what a shame but still probably the first thing that you should do is the official tutorial after that go and search around the official documentation that's great too it will introduce you to some concepts you will not learn it but you will be introduced to the main major concepts, okay? After that, uh, at least what we did in, uh, in Desonet is we did this React training and we actually did the best boss course learning Re React for beginners, I think it was called. Uh, but I couldn't recommend it because we didn't like it. I know a lot of people like best boss course, but uh, we didn't and this one is done by Tyler McGuinness, I think, and uh, uh, I would prefer this one. Also, uh, I haven't done this one myself, but uh, I heard that some people did it and they really liked it. It's uh, using React to build web applications on Egghead, okay? So be sure to do those four things first, okay? Of course, learning JavaScript, HTML, CSS, now you're learning React. That should be it, right? But unfortunately it's not. React has this modular ecosystem, right? And you really cannot have a full production application with just React. I mean, you, you can have, but it's, it's not really scalable. Uh, you have to have these extra friends help you and the first one is like probably at least as famous as react itself it's redux and redux just actually helps you to manage your state you don't have to use redux for every application mm -hmm. but you should probably use something to manage your state uh, you can do that with uh, there's a project I think by the same Tyler McGuinness to have Firebase as your state, 
uh, I mean, it automatically syncs the local state to the Firebase state, and uh, that's basically an alternative to Redux. Uh, you can have Mobix. Haven't used it, unfortunately, but I really, really like. I would really like to use it, and uh, I'm going to start learning it really soon. Uh, also, you can use if you're using Meteor or something like that. You are also you also don't need Redux. Otherwise, probably Redux is the best thing there is for you. React Router, again, very very popular. Ninety percent of the time, you should be using that if you need a router. There are some projects like Next.js which uh, use their own routers. So it's not a must, but still very good and very popular project. Then we have Babel for transpiling JSX and ES6 Plus for all the browsers to understand. Then we have Webpack to really nicely manage all this mess of hundreds of files. And finally, we have this immutable uh, that helps you basically mostly with Redux, then you have to make sure that you're not mutating your state accidentally. Uh, the last one is like totally optional. The first uh, four are mostly, you can mostly say they're mostly required. Uh, my opinion, the best way to learn Redux, and this is, this is actually the second um, Second step, the first step, learning React. The second step is learning Redux. Once you master all of those, uh, you can really start, you know, making real useful React applications. Okay? Uh, there is an Egghead course. There is modern React with Redux. We are actually uh, doing that right now with some people in this company who are like learning React. Excellent course, could not recommend it more. Uh, we have Advanced React and Redux, the last one by the same guy, actually really great guy, really explains very easily how Redux works and if you, if you have some experience when you're trying to learn React or so like Angular and you find it a bit too steep, I mean it's too hard, uh, do this course. Find, find these courses, they are really easy and they are really, really understandable. At least that's the opinion we share right here. Uh, finally, learning React Router, uh, official docs. It's, since it's updated to version four, uh, not a lot of tutorials, but we have this Egghead course, which is uh, great, and so you should do official docs then try this Egghead tutorial. Uh, that back, we have official docs again, and this Udemy course, the same guy again, the one who does modern React with Redux, uh, has a course on that back too. I'm not doing that, haven't done that, but uh, I have Edvinas right here who has, uh, I think, finished it, and really, really helped us switch to that back too uh, in some projects internally right here. Finally, I'd like to introduce starter kits. Uh, those are basically combination of uh, some or all of the like, ecosystem in one package. Then you don't, for these cases, when you don't want you know, to start out, install React, install React DOM, install Redux, Install React Redux, install React Router, install React Router Redux, and all these packages, they're kind of like, kind of pre-packaged for you. Uh, my three favorite ones are <coughs> Create React App, managed, uh, like developed, uh, maintained by Facebook itself. Uh, in my opinion, really limited, but if you're just starting out or for demo projects, really great. This presentation is built using this Create React app and was like probably a couple of hours just to set up everything. Then I spent like 10 hours uh, searching for these nice images. <laughs> so that, that's how it went. But the code part was like done really, really quickly. It was really easy to do this uh, presentation soft software with Create React app. React Slingshot actually really great for learning Redux, 
It has a really great demo application. So if you're just starting out with Redux, be sure to check this out. Finally, Next.js, really advanced thing. Uh, doesn't use React Router, uses internal router, uses service workers to prefetch extra pages. So uh, whenever people save that single page application, initial load time is like huge. Uh, Next.js doesn't preload everything. It really loads just the page you need and then preloads using service workers all the other pages as JSON. Okay, that's really smart approach. Really, I was uh, really surprised by this creative solution. Finally, we are uh, at the step of live example. And in this live example, I'm going to like really quickly show you how to create a to-do app. I am over my time budget by nine minutes, so I have to work like twice as fast. And uh, let's do it step by step, okay? I'm going to show my code. Let's first see if you can see anything. Okay. So step number one, create React app. If you want to follow along, you can do that if you have your laptop right here. Otherwise, you can just watch uh, how I do it. Step one, install, create, create React app, right? So I had it installed, so I don't need it. I can go directly to step number two. Create React app and name of your app. So create React app, let's name it to do. Now wait for like 10 minutes. It's really, I, for some reason it is huge, like Donald Trump huge. Uh, I think it's, it's like a bit less than one, one GB. So you can imagine how, uh, how long does it take to just download it. Does this yarn? Sorry? Is this yarn under the hood? Uh, I cannot promise that this yarn, I think they have been uh, switching to yarn. Uh, they had some problems as the de dependencies, some, some of the dependencies, they're being like downloaded yeah, multiple yarn. times. Yep, that's yarn. Uh, yeah, so probably they changed, I, I know that they changed back to NPM and probably they changed back to yarn again. Okay, they are all, all done. So, CD to the to do. Okay. Uh, let's open my code editor. Let's see what we get right here. Okay, let's. Can you see that all right? Zoom on. Uh, unfortunately, this one doesn't do zoom so well. <laughs> this one does. Uh, thanks some other time, then, I, <laughs> then I'm not that tired, you know. <laughs> this one does. Uh, let's check the source, okay? Let's, have you heard about JS6, right? Have, have mentioned that once today, but uh, for the beginners, you probably haven't seen it. So this section right here is JS6. And you can immediately tell why people say that it is HTML in JavaScript. Because it looks like really close to HTML, right? Uh, in this example we have, I can see, basically just two differences. Difference number one, we have class name instead of class. And uh, the reason why class is actually reserved in JavaScript, so you cannot use the same class. Uh, difference number two we have, right here we have this logo inside square, uh, curly brackets. Curly brackets in JSX just means that this will be some 
JavaScript code in here. Inside the curly brackets, curly brackets, you will have some JavaScript code, okay? Otherwise, it's really close to HTML. There are some quirks like uh, you cannot really omit this uh, ending slash, but that's, those are just minor details, okay? So let's create the to-do list, right? Okay, yeah, not my code editor of choice, but it still works. Okay, uh, basically we are done. We have, oh, no, we are not done. We have to do, to do. <coughs> Okay, are we done yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think we are done. Let's let's see what we have right here. <coughs> and here we go. To do that, spinning logo. That's like in Silicon Valley, you can really raise a couple of million <laughs> with this kind of fancy React, React app, single page applications. Uh, so, let's introduce some functionality, okay? Uh, display the to-do list, okay, we have that. Move the to-dos to the state. So that's basically my to-do list for creating the to-do list app. Uh, the concept of state uh, is a lot of the time uh, hard for people to understand. Let me just like show that to you, how to do that, and then I'll explain it. So, this is state. Uh, I can see a lot of uh, more experienced developers like grinding their teeth. I can see in the back. Uh, they probably are used more to like introducing the state in constructor, but let's keep it simple. Uh, create React app supports uh, class properties, so we can do something like that. Just declare the state inside our app class. The state wouldn't do as much good if we would not be using it, right? So let's use the state right here. Remember what I said that uh, inside curly brackets you are going to have the JavaScript code, right? So let's have some JavaScript code. Let's see if that works. Uh, good thing is that I'm really tired today, so I will be making lots of mistakes and we will have some opportunities to debug it. Yep. What's wrong with that? I think you're missing from the first for the function. Uh, what do you mean? Yep. You right here? Yeah. Uh, I'm using implicit return, so I don't need that. Okay. 
Why? What are you missing? You, oh, I, I was not missing anything. It was just not... I, I have no, no explanation for this. <laughs> Honestly, I... Like, Create React App just wants to screw me over during my presentation. My bad. Yep, so I was not missing anything, uh, but I'm all, you know, riled up right now. <laughs> uh, so this is how you do, uh, how you use state, okay? And if you're a beginner, that doesn't say a lot what's going on right here. So first of all, we are selecting a state and we are selecting the to-dos. So, to follow along, at least you have to know some JavaScript, otherwise, uh, really, you, you cannot follow along. But if you know some JavaScript, don't worry, you can follow along. So, I have to do which is an array. Arrays in JavaScript have this method map, and I'm calling this map, which gets a callback, which gets two parameters. Oh, actually, three parameters, but I'm using just the first two. The first parameter is actually this value in the array, right? The first value. The second one is the index, okay? That means this first one is zero, the second one is one. <coughs> then I am returning, like I'm replacing my first item did this whole thing. This whole thing, it's just, React doesn't have a templating language, right? Like Angular or competing projects. It just uses JavaScript. And JSX is like an extension of JavaScript, right? But not a templating language. So I'm just replacing this, uh, this text did the li uh, element, okay? And this li element, this key, it just, uh, just so happens that everything, every uh, sibling has to be unique, and for this reason, to make sure that it's unique, I am combining the index with the actual to-do task, uh, to-do task, if you would have duplicate tasks, then it would not be unique. If you would just be using index, there are some cases why it's not a good idea. So combination pretty much covers a lot of that uh, bad cases. Just in this case, you are not using index, I think. Yeah, so the project was I, but oh yeah, and there you are right. Is there a reason why you just don't simply use the I variable? Uh, yeah, because uh, uh, on like if you if you're like adding some delete functionality or like drag and drop resorting, I is it's really going to bite you in the ass. <laughs> it happened for me once. I was like doing a drag and drop, and uh, it really really screwed me over until I realized that React is not understanding how the resorting, uh, how the drag and drop actually does like it changes the components so yep uh, we can leave to do for now that's not uh, the key is not that, that important in this case more important is that I can return inside the map this li element okay let's see what we should do next move to the state create a to-do component oh uh, so, so since we don't have like a lot of time, I'm just going to do this next one and uh, you can ask your fellow seniors in this room to show you how to do the rest, okay? So, remember uh, modularity. My, one of the main reasons for choosing React. So, I'll show you how usually it's done in React, in real applications. I'm creating a new folder called components. Inside this components folder, I'm going to have a new file like to do. To do, yeah, to do. I'm going to create a new component right now. So, 
First of all, you have to have React. Uh, yep. It's going to be uh, this component right here, right? Li. So I'm immediately copy and pasting it right here. Finally, I have to export it, but it's not, again, ES6 has named exports and uh, default exports. This time, default export. You might be wondering what the hell is going on right here. And right here, I'm going, let me think about it, I'm just going to do children, okay? I am going to just display the children, and children means everything what's inside the opening and closing tag are children, okay, in the React. So I have to pass whatever I want to see between the li tags, between those new to-do tags, okay? So I'm going to replace the li the to do right here and right here, okay? That won't work, of course, since I have not imported the component. So, what I've done right now, I've imported the to do component from components to do file and I'm using it right here the same way as I was using the li I'm just using the component the to do happens to be like super simple it's just an li wrapper around the children but the general principle holds the same in all the react components you pass some props or you pass the children and this new component then handles everything else. Uh, I really see that I'm really short on time, so let's move to the Q&A session, okay? Oh, by the way, let's see, let's check if that works. And it works. <laughs> uh, okay, so again, I mostly uh, yeah, thanks for filming. Uh, mostly want to ask uh, if you have any questions or if, if I should like clarify how you should learn React. Okay. Okay. Can go on. Does it uh, happen that you need to change the HTML of the component? Uh, what What would happen? Uh, no, does it happen ever? Uh, or how would you approach that? If you uh, I'm just just to make sure what you mean. You mean what would happen if I would have to change this li to be yeah. like a div? Yeah, or a class or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, all the time. But it's not. It's actually not HTML. It's JSX. Okay. Yeah, but not not that you change it all all around the project. But <coughs> So, for example, in the Angular, you have templates, you can override the templates somehow. Uh -huh. uh, how would you approach this in, in, the, in this situation? Uh, uh, to be honest, you, you, I cannot, probably I don't understand what you are asking, but let's talk about it uh, after this presentation. I'll probably, we can go to an example, figure out what you, what you want to know, okay? Do you have any more questions? Was that my only question, the one which I couldn't answer? <laughs> Excellent, okay, yeah, the lifesaver. React and uh, comparing to Angular, it's a question for me, where you showed how you're rendering the HTML, it's cool, okay, but where are you putting all the, if you have sometimes some business logic in the front end, 
or some calculation so that if, you, if that is the case that you need to have. Okay, yeah, that's a fair question. Uh, how would you go around uh, having some functionality in your app, right? Was that, was that right? Pretty much if you have some compilations or something. Yeah, so functionality, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, there are some, you know, breakpoints. Uh, for example, you would go very differently if you're using Redux. Redux has one approach. If you are talking raw, React, uh, let's imagine how would I go about uh, implementing like uh, deleting, deleting and uh, a to-do, right? Yeah. You can create inside your uh, app components. You see we have like components which are functions and you have some components which are actually classes, <coughs> class-based components. Those other ones are functional components. Inside class components, you can have something like on delete app, and that's a function. Uh, it like modifies the state. The state when whenever the state this this guy whenever it's modified, actually not modified, overwritten. You cannot modify the state, but it's nuance. Uh, whenever the state is replaced with a new state, React automatically diffs the DOM, the real DOM, with its virtual DOM, sees the difference, replaces the necessary parts which have been changed. If we are talking Redux, then all of that, uh, most of the time, all of that happens inside the reducers or action creators. Depends on, on like, the, the logic basically spread out. Uh, in between action creators and reducers and action creators especially with uh, or, or more like in middleware if you're having some async uh, logic in there and uh, reducers if you want to just modify do some calculations uh, stuff like that happy with my answer? <laughs> yes. great uh, do I have any more questions? Good. Uh, it's not, maybe it's not about React, but I said React is a, a stone that will inspire new technologies. Yes. And one very similar to React is Vue.js. Yes. Uh, what's your opinion on it, about it? Because they say they're faster than React, and they're easier to learn than React. Uh, have you tried it, and do you have any opinion? Uh, I think that it's faster than React, and I think that it's easier to learn than React. Yes, but that's a new React. <laughs> no, my opinion again. Uh, I think it's a great project. Uh, still, since I have you know tasted the blood of having all my all everything in a single JavaScript file, uh, I don't want to, you know to go back to having external template and uh, having having you know it's a separation. It's like really meaningless. Uh, but I come to prefer this React style to the styles of Angular or Vue.js. To be honest, when I started, I started my uh, career with Meteor, and Meteor had their own uh, templating engine uh, called Blaze. It, the syntax looks like 90% identical to Vue.js. I think one of the creators, uh, one guy created, like all created those both projects, or was involved at least. So I think it's a great project. Uh, then you are starting out, you will not go wrong with either of them. Just don't be concerned with the size or with the speed, because that's improving all the time. I mean, you choose Vue.js because it's faster today. In a couple of weeks, React is faster. In three months, Vue.js is faster again. And in two months, uh, they replace the engine underlying like fiber and it's faster again. So don't base your decision on these like performance metrics. Have I answered your question? Yeah. Great. Uh, I think my time is up. Uh, unless you have like a really pressing last question. You don't. So thank you really for being here. 
Uh, you still have one presentation to go, so probably it will be like a couple of minutes break. And I can't wait to learn about GraphQL. Really interesting project.